Weeds, weeds everywhere. If you garden, you're going to have weeds. But there are things you can do to reduce the number of weeds you have. But the main purpose of this video is to try to get you to look at weeds from a different perspective. When I'm going through the garden, I tend to classify my weeds into a couple categories. Now, I don't know the names of most weeds, and I don't think that's important as a gardener. There are a couple you probably will learn over time because they're just so nasty. But what's more important is for you to classify. Is this a weed you don't really have to worry too much about? Or is this one of the ones that are really bad and you better take care of it right away or it becomes a big problem? And of course, there's some categories in between. So what I'm going to do in this video is to categorize my weeds and give you some tips on how to take care of those weeds. All weeds spread by seeds. Controlling the spread of seeds is your first line of defense. Rule number one, don't let any seed flower and make seeds. The flowering is okay, but you know as well as I do that if you keep the plan and watch the flowers and enjoy that part, you're going to forget about it and not get rid of it before it makes seeds. So a good rule of thumb is as soon as you see the flower, yank that plant out. If you don't allow plants to make seeds, you will have less weeds next year. But what about the seeds that are already in the soil? We call that the seed bank. For years and years, weed seeds have gotten into that soil and they're ready to germinate. Well, there's a couple of things you can do about that. Weed seeds normally germinate where they can get light. So one of the things I do out here in my perennial bed is I plant closer together and I let my plants get large and touch each other. Right at the soil level, it's very shady. I don't have any weed problem there. Where I get weed problem is where the plants are too far apart or along the edge of the beds where some light can get in. Lots of plants, much fewer weeds. The other thing to do is to mulch. And I've made two separate videos. One is called the best mulch for vegetable gardens. And another one is the best mulch for ornamental gardens. So if you're not familiar with mulching, watch those two videos. Mulch eliminates a lot of the weeds. All right, but even if you do those things, you still will get some weeds. So what do you do? As I mentioned, I, I don't usually bother trying to identify my weeds but I do watch the weeds and see how they grow. And as I'm digging them up, I look at the root system. That tells me a lot about the plant. I take these weeds and I classify them into one of four categories, based partially at least on their root system. The first category are annuals that have a fibrous root system. Now these are the weeds that are the least problem and I'm least concerned about them. So if I have those in the garden, yeah, so what? I don't worry too much about them. So what are some examples of these? Some of the clovers are annuals. And so I have a big clump of clover here, but in fact, it's about six different plants. And you can see that the seed head dropped from last year, made a whole bunch of seedlings. They will grow, they're flowering now, they'll make more seeds. But these are pretty easy to get rid of. Don't let them make seed or cover the ground. Here's another one that's sort of a weed, forget-me-nots. Now I know they're great plants and I tend to leave them in various spots, but if you let them flower and seed, you'll have a lot more next year. So in midsummer, I go around and pull most of these out. And I leave a few because I do like the flowers in the spring. But again, if we have a look at the plant, it has a nice fibrous root system. If I see only a fibrous root system, I'm not that worried about weeds. This is a category you don't have to worry about too much. Some of the spurges are like that. So this one's just starting to flower. Nice fibrous root system, single plant. I get a lot of these for some reason, but they're pretty easy to pull out. And that's another nice thing about these annual fibrous plants. The root system's pretty small because the plant doesn't put a lot of energy into building a big root system, but it's gonna die and fall anyways. And so they're generally very easy to pull out. Oh, and by the way, when I pull these out, I just throw them in the garden. They'll dry out, fertilize the rest of the garden, 
You don't have to throw those weeds out. So that category is easy to deal with. Now we have another category, fibrous root systems that are perennial. So they'll come back year after year. An example of that is the myrtle spurge, which is a nice garden plant in cooler zones, but it does spread around. And in warmer zones, it's a real noxious weed. In fact, in Colorado, you're not allowed to grow it because it's such a noxious weed. Here in my zone five garden, it seeds around a little bit. I leave a few and I pull out the excess. There are many types of clover and this is a different type and you can see it's blooming now. It has a nice fibrous root system, but it's a perennial. So if I don't pull this out, it'll come back year after year. So the urgency to control this is a little higher because if you don't, it'll just get larger each year and make more and more flowers every year. Again, it's relatively easy to pull out. You either just pull it out or you dig it out. Not a big problem. All right, now we come to category three. Now we're looking at some serious weeds and we want to keep them under control. You probably recognize this one. That's the dandelion. You'll notice that there's no fibrous root system here. This is a taproot. The problem with tap roots are that they're almost impossible to pull out. So you can try to dig them out. And in fact, I got this one because I used a fairly big shovel and I dug nice and deep so I get the whole thing. But normally I only get a top part. The problem with these are they are perennial. They'll come back year after year, but they're hard to dig out. So I spend more time on these to try and get rid of them. These are what I call bad weeds. But again, the nice thing about these is if you never let them flower, you'll only have a certain number of these. Of course, your neighbors are letting them flower and then the seed comes over and you have to deal with that. There are quite a few thistles in the garden and many of them have tap roots. You can see a nice white tap root here. It's split into three roots, but it's still a tap root. Now, how do you deal with this type of weed? Well, it's important to get a good part of the root out. If you just cut off the leaves, it will regrow from this root system. That's the problem with tap roots. There's a lot of food in here and the plant just regrows and regrows. You've experienced that with dandelions. Right? You can cut the leaves off, you can cut the top off, and it just regrows. So the way to get rid of these is to dig down and get as much of the plant as you can out of the ground. But for most of these, if you get the top two inches of root, the plant will die. Now that's not true of all of these. It is true of many of them, and it is true of the dandelion. If you can get the top two inches of dandelion out, the bottom part will usually die away. And if it does regrow, it'll be a very weak plant, so you dig it out a second time and then it will be gone. The next category of weed is a fibrous root system that has runner. Now, I don't know what this weed is, but it does show up quite a bit in the garden. Very fibrous root system, but it has these runners. And the runner goes along the ground and a new plant comes up, but another runner and a new plant. That's what makes this weed such a tenacious weed and why you have to pay more attention to it. it. Spreads like crazy. In fact, some of the common garden plants that are a problem for people are this kind of root system. We're talking about the creeping bellflower. Nice blue flowers, but it's called creeping for a reason. The runners just keep spreading. And you pull this part out and the runner over there, which broke off, continues to grow. Lily of the valleys like this. Gout weed. Here's another example. This is quack grass. You can see these side runners, these white roots going out to the side. Every node on here can produce a new plant. The reason those plants are so hard to get out of the ground is that every little piece of runner, every little piece of root here is going to regrow. And no matter how hard you dig, you won't get it all. So how do you deal with this kind of plant? Well, there are a couple of options. You can dig it all out, come back a month later, dig it out again and again, and over two or three years, you can get rid of this plant. The other option is you just cut it off at ground level. You do that every week. The energy in the roots will make a new plant, 
But if you don't allow it to make leaves, it can't get new sunlight. It can't grow. So it keeps making the roots weaker and weaker. Over time, you will get rid of it. But you have to do this religiously every week, all summer long, and maybe next summer too. It does work. The other option is we can mulch this. Well, for some of these that will work. I imagine this one, it probably will kill it. But a lot of these will grow through the mulch unless you use a lot. Now, a weed in this category that's really noxious is field bindweed. Some people call that morning glory, but you shouldn't use that name. Morning glory is a nice garden plant. It can seed around too much, but still it's nothing like field bindweed. Field bindweed can grow 20 feet underground and come up. I had a six foot pile of mulch and it grew through the pile of mulch, came out the top, started growing. It had all this light and no competition. It was so happy. Mulch is not going to kill some of these plants. Quite honestly, the best solution, the quickest solution is a herbicide. The herbicide works well on most of these, but even on bindweed, you have to treat it several times to kill the plant. Bottom line, whenever you see a weed with runners, make it a priority to get it out of the garden. That brings us to the last category of weeds, and these are the worst of the worst. Here's one example. This is Canada thistle. Now, earlier in the year it was growing and I cut it off. And so now it's made several heads here. That's why this looks so congested. But the important part about this plant is the taproot. When it's a young plant, it will make a taproot and it grows quite deep. When it gets a little more mature, it starts making side runners. And these side runners can be 10 feet underground. Once it makes side runners, they all come up and make new plants. In fact, if you have a close look at this plant, it's got a root coming out here and it's already making some new babies on here. If you leave any part of the root underground, it'll make a new plant. It's almost impossible to dig these up. You can get rid of the green parts you see, but in a month or two, it's back. All the roots in the ground will come back. You can't mulch these. You can't dig them out, put newspaper on these, they laugh at you. The only way to control these is with a herbicide. Canna thistle is one of the worst weeds I've encountered in my garden, uh, besides bindweed. Now there are lots of thistles in the garden and it's important that you can tell the difference between this one and the others. And you usually recognize this one because it's not one plant, it's a whole bunch of plants coming up, just like in this photograph. When you see that, you know all these baby plants are grown from runners. And if it's a thistle, it's probably Canada thistle. Now, before you blame me and all the other Canadians for this weed, it actually is a European weed and also grows in Asia. It is not native to North America. I don't know where it got the name Canada thistle. Maybe us Canadians just hate it more than everybody else. So those are my categories of weeds. Now let's just recap the strategy for you in the garden. Number one, don't let anything go to seed. That makes a huge difference long term. Number two, go after the worst weeds first. I mean, if you have time to get out every weed in the garden, that's great. Do that. But if you have limited time, focus on the ones that are really bad. Anything with tap roots, get rid of it. Even the dandelions with tap roots, get rid of them. Plants that have runners are your worst enemy, even if they're garden plants. So when I put a new garden plant in, I watch it to see how it spreads. And if that thing starts spreading fast, I usually yank it and get rid of it. These white runners are the worst thing you'll have to deal with in the garden. Focus all your energy on these. Once these are gone, then you can take care of the other things and they're pretty easy to control. As I mentioned, the best way to control some of these really bad weeds is with a herbicide. But I don't recommend that you spray the herbicide. That uses far too much chemical and you harm other plants. There's a much better way to do this. The way I do it is with a paintbrush. I'll get a bit of Roundup in the kitty pail. I have a small brush that's about an inch wide. I dip it in there and I brush some of the leaves. You don't have to get them all, just some of them. That uses very little chemical. Roundup is extremely safe. It's actually less toxic than vinegar. 
It doesn't last long in the soil, but the small amount we're putting on here will be absorbed into the root system and it kills the root system. That's why it works so well. All those DIY recipes you see online, all they do is brown the leaves up here. That doesn't kill the weed. You have to get rid of the root. No DIY solution will do that. In fact, you're better off just cutting the top off than spraying vinegar and salt and all those other things. So I hope that's been helpful. Weeds are part of gardening. You have to accept that. And if you do a little weeding every time you go in the garden, they're actually pretty easy to keep under control. Have fun in the garden.